concrete floors can be found in many different locations. It could be your garage at home where you park your car, or it could be a factory or warehouse where they're using forklift trucks, moving pallets about, etc. But for now, we're going to deal with the two most commonly found types of bare concrete floor, which are power floated or a concrete screed. Power floated concrete can be recognised by its smooth, slightly shiny surface. A concrete screed, as represented by this slab here, that's got a rougher look to it. And if we put some water onto the surface, we can see that it soaks in and disappears into the surface. And that tells us that any paint that we apply at the right consistency will soak into the surface and bond with the substrate. So those are the two basic types of concrete that we're going to deal with today. So once we've identified what type of concrete we've got, um, we need to make sure that if it's new concrete, it's fully dried out. As a rule of thumb, concrete takes about a month per inch of thickness to dry out. If you're unsure, there is a test that can be done to give you an idea of whether there is still moisture in the concrete that's coming out. And that's to get a piece of heavy duty polythene like this, about 18 inches square, and a roll of heavy duty tape. Tape the polythene down onto the floor on all four sides and leave it for 16 to 24 hours before coming back and peeling back the polythene. If the area underneath the polythene is darker or there are beads of moisture underneath the polythene, then that's showing that there's still moisture in the concrete that wants to evaporate and you shouldn't paint the floor at this stage. If there is still moisture in the concrete and it tries to dry out at a later date, it could actually push your applied coatings off the surface. The next thing we want to make sure is that the surface is sound. Having said that the power floated concrete has a smooth, hard, dense surface, that would usually be okay. But where we have a concrete screed, we can test for latent just by scratching the surface slightly. A latent is when the concrete is drying out, the evaporating moisture brings small particles of cement, aggregates and minerals to the surface, and they're deposited on the top as a thin layer which isn't fully bound into the concrete. So if we find that once we scratch at it, we're taking off that top surface but getting down to a firm layer underneath, then we need to remove that because any paint that we apply will be sitting on that soft layer if that fails at a later date, it will take the paint with it. The easiest way to remove the latents on a relatively small area is to use an acid etch, such as the Bradite TA37. It's a weak acid solution. Basically, you just brush it gently onto the surface, work it in with a stiff bristle brush, and as you can see, it will fizz up when it's reacting with the concrete. Leave it five to 10 minutes. That reaction will die away. You can then rinse off the excess material and any concrete fines, etc., that have been removed and then leave the surface dry. Make sure you do rinse off all the residue though because the acid could react with your paint coatings. If the, the floor has been around for any length of time, you might want to consider using a degreaser stroke cleaner first just to make sure that you've removed any particles of dirt, dust and any oil or grease that might be sitting on the surface so that the surface is sound, clean, and the paint can get good adhesion. If we've got a power floated floor, we've got a smooth, hard surface. So we need to prepare that to take the paint. We've said that it's got very little porosity, so the water won't soak into it. So we need to open up that texture or use a primer. If we're gonna open up the texture, we could use the acid etch again. The alternative is to use a primer. This one is from Rust-Oleum, they're double three, double three. Kuvar have their Pro floor uh, primer. These are two pack materials and we always suggest that if you do use a primer, use a top coat from the same manufacturer and then you won't have any compatibility issues between coatings. So we hope you found that information useful. If you'd like to discuss your project in more detail or you want some more information, then please feel free to give us a call.